India and Nepal are set to begin the 19th edition of Exercise Surya Kiran in Pithorgar from November 25th to December 8th, aiming to sharpen joint skills in jungle warfare and counter-terror operations in challenging mountain terrain. The drill emphasizes niche technology integration, interoperability and exchange of best practices. With last year's edition held in Nepal, the annual exercise continues to deepen long-standing defense ties, operational readiness, and mutual trust between both armies, further reinforcing regional stability and cooperation. India is set to operate KC-135 Stratotankers for the first time, leased from U.S. firm Matria Management, but with a catch, these advanced refuelers cannot fly during wartime and remain under full American control. The move comes as India's aging IL-78 fleet faces severe serviceability issues, crippling long-range missions. The KC-135s will greatly enhance training in peacetime operations, offering much-needed refueling capability, yet the irony remains. India's most capable tankers would sit idle in an actual conflict. India is set to redefine underwater dominance with six next-generation German Type 214 submarines, cleared under Project 75I. Featuring a diamond-shaped stealth hull and non-magnetic materials, these subs remain nearly invisible to Chinese and Pakistani ASW sensors. Their fuel cell AIP system allows three weeks of silent submerged operations, giving India a strategic edge across the Indian Ocean. Built with 70% indigenous content, the program strengthens Atmanirbhar Bharat while boosting deterrence against expanding regional submarine fleets. Pakistan's latest claim of securing a JF-17 Block 3 export deal has sparked regional buzz, with new reports indicating Bangladesh as the undisclosed buyer. Defense Security Asia suggests, Dhaka may be acquiring 16 to 24 fighters, worth up to 700 million US dollars, its largest ever air power upgrade. The purchase would replace aging jets, and make Bangladesh the fourth global JF-17 operator. While Pakistan cites strategic sensitivities, both nations remain silent, keeping the mystery alive for now. India's army is launching a bold twin-track green overhaul, electric vehicles for base logistics, and hydrogen fuel cell tech for harsh frontline operations. With diesel fleets guzzling millions of liters daily, the force aims to phase in hydrogen-powered heavy trucks by 2040. Backed by Indian Oil Corporation Limited, Tata and Reliance, the army is pushing co-development of rugged H2 systems under IDEX. Electric vehicles already serve cantonments, while hydrogen emerges as the battlefield workhorse, fast to refuel, long-range and combat ready. After the Tejas MK-1 crash at the Dubai Air Show, experts are assessing how the upcoming Tejas MK-2 would behave in a similar negative G upset. The answer lies in its new close-coupled canard design, which provides powerful instant nose-up authority, something the MK-1's pure delta wings struggled with at low speeds. These canards remain effective even in disturbed airflow, improving stall behavior and giving the flight control system far more control during recovery. Backed by a stronger F-414 engine and upgraded avionics, Tejas MK-2 offers a significantly wider safety and recovery envelope, though no fighter can ever be fully departure-proof. India's indigenous fighter radar program hits a major breakthrough as LRD begins testing the UTAM MK-2 AESA radar, set to power the Tejas MK-2 from 2027. Equipped with 980 high-efficiency gallium nitride modules, the radar promises superior detection ranges beyond 200 kilometers, stronger jamming resistance, and a wide 140-degree field of view. The same advanced radar will also feature on future Tejas MK-1A units, marking a unified upgrade path for the IAF. With ground trials underway and flight trials planned for 2026, the UTAM MK-2 strengthens India's push for cutting-edge, homegrown combat avionics under Atmanirbhar Bharat. That's all for now. Hope you like this video. 
Please like, share, and subscribe for daily news updates. Thanks for watching.